Hi, uh, everybody. Hi, this is Dale Anderson from Fabric Invest. I hope you're keeping well. Thank you for joining us. I know it's getting near to Christmas and everybody's busy and there's a lot going on setting up the Christmas trees and decorations. So we're really uh, excited for you to join us today. We're going to have some really great guest speakers on from uh, Get Ground Limited, International Property Finance Group for Mortgages. We've got Nicole and Alex from Currency UK. So information packed um, and yeah, we'll try not to be too long. We just wanna give you a quick update on what's going on in the UK market. Obviously there's been a lot of things happening with regards to interest rates, uh, inflation, and you know, a lot of people are sitting on the fence or thinking whether now is a good time to buy or to wait, or you know, should what what should we do really basically in the next few months? So, again, as a quick introduction, my name is Dale Anderson. I've been involved in UK property investment for the last 17 years. Uh, moved to London from South Africa, as you can hear from the accent. I moved when I was around 20, 21 years old back in 2004. Um, and then, yeah, I forged a career in property. I've bought properties myself in the UK. Um, I'm now very happy and blessed to live in Cape Town in South Africa. My team is based in the UK. So we've got a head, off to, head office with purchase progression, customer care, uh, and a team of property experts that are available to assist. So today we're going to discuss, you know, what should we do? Is it a good time to invest or not? Uh, what are the benefits of buying through a UK limited company? quick update on the mortgage market and interest rates and also the benefits of, you know, for a lot of our clients who are overseas, the take advantage of the currency market trends and also where we believe there will be good hotspots for investment in 2023. So welcome to our guests. We really appreciate your time and thanks for joining us. We've got Connor from Get Ground. We've been working with for a couple of years now, helping set up tax efficient UK limited companies. So uh, uh, Get Ground, you know, they educate people about the benefits of buying through a company. They make it easy and cost effective. So I've been following them as a, you know, as a tech platform for prop tech. Really exciting. The rental sector is obviously a growing market and Get Ground have played a crucial role in helping our investors set up a UK limited company and bank accounts. So welcome, Connor. Um, I've also got Darren from International Property Finance Limited. We recommend them for mortgages. So Darren's got uh, 20 years experience. He's worked for Connor Mortgage Services, 15 years in the hospitality industry, bought property himself. And he, with his first home, he had a bit of a bad experience with the mortgage brokers. So he decided to study and do the exams to become a mortgage experts we've been working with them for a couple of years they can help expats domestic as well as international investors uh, with arranging mortgages and finance so lots of experience there we've also got max from international property finance again lots of experience in the mortgage market and helping investors um, and then we've also got the managing director alex coates from currency uk we recommend them for currency transfers and international payments they make things really simplified um, and they help bring stability to clients looking to exchange currencies and make payments overseas. So it's great to have you guys. And thank you very much for joining us. So the first thing, the big question, is now a good time to invest in UK property? So what we do at Fabric Invest, we're very much a knowledge-based consultant. We do a lot of market research uh, with the likes of Zoopla. They provide great analysis and reports, Knight Frank, JLL Savills, just to really look at the history of the market and what exactly is going on. Um, so according to the latest market report by Zoopla, there's three factors to consider. What impact has the mini budgets had on the, the market? Um, do transactions, you know, are transactions and pricing forecasts for 2023, do they still stand because things have changed since then? And are there any regions or cities in the UK that are now seeing house prices fall? So according to Zoopla, the house price market was very heated. There's still been a plus 7.8% UK house price growth year on year. However, since the mini budget with Liz Trust and everything that happened, uh, there's been a less than a 28% sales volume versus a year ago and 25% homes of any size of asking price are now being asked to reduce. So we are finding that uh, people who have their properties listed are having to potentially now reduce their prices. So we've gone from a really heated seller's market to what I believe is a buyer's market, which can also bring some uh, potential opportunities. 
So just to summarize on the latest housing report by Zoopla, the mini budget fallout hit demand by minus 44%, more than new sales. New sales fell by half in the hottest market, less in affordable areas. So your areas where you know prices are more affordable, you get a better yield. There still seems to be high demand uh, compared to the more expensive cities and areas that you know where the prices are higher. Um, there hasn't actually been any price falls recorded over the last quarter, despite the doom and gloom in the news and you know everyone's saying there's going to be a house price crash and I guess the fundamentals are still there for property rental rental prices have been going up however we are seeing there are now more discounts to asking prices on new sales so that has widened in recent weeks and there's also been widespread repricing of homes underway as sales volumes decline uh, there has been less buyers demand um, albeit the repricing has been very modest so we need to, there's a diverse range of factors, need-driven factors to support sales volume. You know, a lot of people are being, you know, there's cost of living, inflation, uh, there's the war in Ukraine, so there's so much going on. So there is a range of factors, but a lot of that is driving people, you know, out of more expensive property and city centers into more affordable homes. And of course, a lot of this has also been down due to affordability. Uh, mortgage rates are set to start 2023 at around Five percent, although I have been told that they are already coming down slightly, which is great news. So if we look at some of the stature by Zoopla, available homes for sale recovering as activity slows. As you can see, the average uh, number for sale listings per estate agent branch since 2017-2019 average has dropped uh, slightly, and then the total remain uh, total supply remains 19% below the 2017-2019 average. Widespread repricing underway, asking price reductions since 1st of September, as you can see in the light blue line, uh, where prices, people are getting up to 5% discount, um, and then in some areas up to 5 to 10% discount. So potentially really a good time to be thinking, if you do have cash, can I actually get a good deal right now on property and negotiate? And that's something people are not really talking about. House price growth slows down across UK cities, so there was a real restriction of supply due to COVID, uh, and let's face it, we've had record low borrowing rates for a while now. If you speak to people like myself who've been doing property investment now for 17 years, 4 or 5% interest rates are not uncommon. In fact, in South Africa, where I am, the interest rates are currently 10%, so double that of the UK. But as you can see, quarterly house price growth um, you know, has slowed down, and we were looking at three, three, four percent quarterly price growth over the last two, three years. Surprisingly, the Bank of England projected that prices during COVID would drop by 15 percent. The exact opposite happened. Prices went up, the market was heated. So we believe there is a correction happening in the market and it's, uh, you know, proportion of asking prices achieved have taken a dip, as you can see. So sellers before could ask 100% of the sales prices or even price properties higher than the, the, the market value. What we are finding now is there's a correction and you know buyers are actually getting, in some cases, better value for money. So five strategies you need to consider whether or not, I mean, this is a question I'm getting asked a lot now, is it a good time to buy property? So number one, motivated sellers. You wanna look for motivated sellers who are looking for uh, you know, sales or quick sales. Um, and that's part of a strategy that I've used for many years, which has been very popular. Number two, location, location, as you've heard, is there high demand for rental? You know, you want to make sure your property is rented and that there's going to be regeneration. So in the mid to long term, there's going to be capital growth. Number three, is it cash flow positive? So do your numbers, do your math, speak to a mortgage expert. Um, you need to calculate because rent's actually going up at the moment. So a lot of that's helping investors um, with regards to costs. Not great for tenants, but for landlords, you know, it does help with the higher interest rates. So just do the maths and make sure that your income covers your cost, your service charge, management free and operational lettings costs. Uh, if it's cash flow positive, you know, that's good debt, not bad debt. So potentially that could still be a good long term investment. Also, when investing, you need to look at long-term capital appreciation. The old saying rings true, don't wait to buy a property, buy property and wait 
uh, throughout history. So if we look at various recessions across the last hundred years, um, it's always been linked to whether there's been a crisis for inflation, oil costs, war. Uh, these things affect the market. But what we have found is the UK has been very resilient. It has bounced back very quickly. So again, there's another four uh, additional factors to consider. So when, when looking at property, my suggestion, if you are going to be buying property in the next uh, next year, is the property being sold at the true market value? There were a lot of developers selling at very high prices um, because there was a strong buyer and overseas demand. So you just want to check that the property um, stacks up in terms of valuations. And again, this is important because when it does come to completion, you want to make sure the valuations are going to stack up when getting your mortgage. Number two, don't always go for the overpriced luxury properties. In my opinion, it's all great if it's got all this luxury stuff and concierge, uh, and you want to buy a property and then fix it up and put in all these luxury specs. But ultimately, the valuers are going to look at sold market comparables on that street. So often is the case that the location of the property will determine the valuation of the house. You can get good high specification property that doesn't have to be over the top, uh, you know, with designer brands and things. So bear that in mind because otherwise you're not going to make uh, much capital growth. Number three, use a mortgage expert to get the best rates. I've made this mistake in the past. Uh, I haven't used very good mortgage providers. They've got me rates and I, I realized afterwards I could have actually got a better rate if I used the right mortgage experts. So it's definitely worth the money because if you if you actually calculate the interest that they can save you over 10, 15, 20 years, it can amount to a lot of money. Um, and number four, in the current market, I believe cash is kin. Uh, if you do have cash and you have a cash buffer, you know, don't put all your eggs into one basket. If you are looking to buy for cash, what we are finding now, I mean, we've got access to developments across the country. As you can see, there's different cities according to Zoopla, and this shows you how house prices have moved in the Northwest. We're still up 9%, in the Northeast, 7.4%. Cities where we recommend property investments, such as Manchester, 9%, Birmingham prices up 8.9%, Liverpool, 87 So even if there is a slight correction, prices are still up from two years ago. Um, and you know that should give some peace of mind for anyone who has recently uh, invested, because we were in a heated markets. So that's the news from Zoopla. Um, I'm going to move on now to Connor at Get Ground. He's going to discuss how you can buy property tax efficiently through a UK uh, limited company. So go ahead, Connor. And yeah, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Dale. Thanks very much. And hello, everyone. Um, and I hope everyone is, is keeping well and looking forward to Christmas. Um, so, so yeah, so, so as Dale said there, and as you alluded to, I, I work for a company called Get Ground. Um, and at Get Ground, what we do is we set up limited companies for bike let purposes here in the UK. So we set up structure <clears throat> and manage limited companies for bike let purposes in the UK. This in turn allows the investor, uh, you know, you as, as, as a customer, as a client, the opportunity to maximize your yield, maximize your gain, along with a whole heap of other benefits uh, I'm going to come to in, in just a quick second. Um, but a figure I always like to open up with and and one that I think, think speaks volumes about the market currently is, is that today in the UK, over 65% of all buy-to-lets are done so by limited company structure. And traditionally, the, the setting up and certainly the management of a limited company would have been seen to have been very long-winded, very taxing, and certainly very costly for the investor, which, which would see them have to instruct a solicitor, accountant, tax advisor when you want to extract that income efficiently from, from the company. Um, could take them anywhere between four to six weeks in the first instance to have the company incorporated and then could see you know see you being charged maybe two and a half to three and a half thousand pounds for the ongoing management of that company at get grand what we do and what, what we try and offer is a solution that is quick easy and cost effective that can facilitate you and, and have no impact on the deal or the sales cycle uh, and, and i know dale will, will, will probably back me up here i oh, sorry dale but, but still back on the on the first uh, sorry and so so I, I as i was saying the the, the market today it, certainly the the um uh, uh with 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 properties that are um that, that are attractive and um, it, it's it, it can it can move very very fast and very very fast pace typically you've got 21 days to exchange contracts um, and for us as a third party service, we like to have companies set up and ready to go as soon as possible. So we can have companies incorporated as quickly as 24 hours. 
And I'm going to come to how I do that in, in just a quick second. And um, so as I said, what is it exactly that we do? Well, it's the fastest and easiest way to set up a bike leg company here in the UK. But what are these specific services that GetGren will provide for you as our client? <clears throat> so GetGren will set up a UK limited company for you. With that, we provide a business account for all your property expenses, so a company bank account. And then we do everything required thereafter to manage your company. So we look after all of the accounts. We do all the tax returns. We look after all the legal work, secretarial services, and the management of the registered office here in the UK as well. And actually, the office number, it says there, One Lyric Square, the office I'm sat in here now in Hammersmith, will act as the registered address for each individual company that we set up. So you might be overseas looking to invest in the UK and you might be looking to borrow or leverage from the bank and might be struggling to do so. Why? Because you've got no bank account here in the UK. And why can't you set up a bank account? Because you've no registered address here in the UK. And we can solve all those issues again in as quickly as kind of 24 to 48 hours by setting up a UK limited company with a registered UK address and we provide the business bank account. It's a super, super efficient way for any overseas investor looking to purchase property. Um, but naturally, still, the majority of our market is, is UK-based. And so, so next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so why would one use a company? Um, there's a whole heap of, of reasons why one would use a company, but I'm going to kind of touch on the, the kind of key points. And the first is that there's a gain in tax efficiency. And on the next slide, I'm going to, I'm going to jump a bit deeper into that. Um, you limit your personal liability. You can buy and sell property easily improve estate and inheritance planning, and then access to really well-developed mortgage markets as well, which I know Darren is gonna to touch on in, in just a second. Um, so if we can go to the next slide, please. Thank you. But the, but the main reason why individuals or investors set up limited companies here in the UK for buy to let purposes um, are the tax advantages or the tax efficiencies that come with. And again, I'm going to run through these kind of one by one or the key points. And the first is around stamp duty land tax, SDLT, and, and obviously has, has uh, again, since the, since the mini budget, as Dale touched on, has, has been plastered all over the media over the last couple of weeks and, and, um, and for good reason. But what actually is a misconception here in the UK is that it's often thought that you pay a higher level of stamp duty land tax when buying a bike led through a company structure. So it's actually false. You pay the same level of stamp duty land tax when buying a bike let through a company structure as if you were to do it in your personal name. It's not necessarily a gain there in the first instance, um, but level playing field. Um, these next two are with regards to owning the property. Um, and, and the first was, was, was prior to ownership. These next two are with regards to uh, when you were owning the property. Um, and, uh, and probably what is the most attractive advantage or maybe the most lucrative saving you're going to make and that is that you can deduct all of your mortgage interest from your UK tax bill, as well as any other business expense. So your service charge, your ground rent, your management, your maintenance, any business expense, as well as your mortgage interest can be deducted from your tax bill. And you can avoid paying what's called a basic rate credit. And again, something I, I, I've no doubt Darren's going to touch on. Obviously, there's been a rise in interest rates. And although it doesn't completely mitigate all of that, but we can deduct that interest from your tax bill. So massive, massive saving there. We can efficiently take income from the property um, and avoid paying income tax. Here in the UK, over 85% of all buy to let landlords are higher rate taxpayers. So they're paying 40, in some cases, 45% income tax. And we can avoid paying income tax. In some cases, we can avoid paying any tax at all. And we can do that by structuring the repayments by way of an owner's loan or a director's loan um, through dividends, or we can contribute towards your pension as a, as a client or a customer. We can contribute towards your pension very efficiently as well. Uh, these next two are with regards to the exit strategy when you're looking to sell and, and, and when you're looking to exit the investment. Uh, um, with regards to any investment, whether it's property or not, you, you, you always consider the return, which, which I guess is the glamorous part, which will draw you in. Um, you always must consider the, the risk, um, but then you also must consider the exit strategy. And in some cases, the exit strategy is more important um, than the first two. Uh, and, and the first, again, is around SDLT, stamp duty land tax. Um, but when we sell, our buyer can avoid paying stamp duty land tax. And um, so here in the UK, stamp duty land tax is, is unavoidable when buying an asset. Okay, When you buy a property, you, you must pay stamp duty land tax. We, we all know that. That's... And um, that's pretty common knowledge, right? Um, but because we've set up a company, because the company's bought the asset, 
and because the company's paid stamp duty land tax, when we sell and we sell the company that holds the asset, as opposed to selling the asset itself, our buyer can avoid paying stamp duty land tax. And we can use this as a price advantage at the point of exit as well. And then lastly, when we do exit and we sell through company structure, we pay lower capital gains tax. So 8% lower capital gains tax at the point of exit. Um, and on average, uh, you know, it, by let landlords here in the UK hold on to investment properties for anywhere between kind of 20 to 25 years. So that 8%, I think on, on, uh, on, on the previous slide, I think uh, Dale was, was discussing an increase in, in value, I think over 7%, but that 8% capital gains difference can accumulate to quite a sum of money over a 20, 25 year period, even a five to 10 year period, that 8% saving capital gain can be, can be pretty big. Um, so next slide, please. So then just to kind of, um, I guess, marry this all together and, and to use an investment scenario. And, and again, this is an example investment scenario and I can share this with anyone afterwards to have a look at. Um, so hypothetically, let's say I was an investor and I was gonna buy a two bedroom flat here in the UK worth 500,000 pounds. And again, I'm gonna use very, very basic figures for my own brain to keep on top of. Um, where you put down 25% with the bank and you borrowed 350,000 pounds. Your rental income was give or take £20,000 a year, which is a, uh, around a 4% yield, which is below the UK average. And your property was to increase in value by 15% over a five-year period, uh, which is more than achievable. The UK average is, is give or take 5.5% annually currently. And as I said, Dale showed, showed figures there it's in, it, above seven. You could... Um, you could increase your return on investment by 66% over a five-year period by simply setting up a limited company, extracting the income efficiently from that company. And then when we sell, we sell the company itself that holds the asset. If we set up a limited company, extract the income efficiently from that company and sell the asset out of the company, we can still increase our return on investment by 22%. So a huge, huge difference there in your return on investment. There's a massive difference there in your gain. And you're pretty much doing nothing too dissimilar to what you would have been doing in the first instance, right? And, and that's where get ground and that's where we come in and, and I guess streamline that whole process from start to finish and um, from setup to management. And we do that by using technology as Dale touched on and we do that by using software. Um, so if we can go to the next slide, please. And so the majority of people that, that, that work at get ground uh, are, 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 are software or tech orientated. And why is that relevant? Well, for the last four years, they've developed an incredibly user-friendly platform that can allow any investor, whether they're UK or non-UK based, come in and purchase property through a company structure here in the UK. And I'm going to run through some of the key points again of our, of our product or our online platform. And the first is, is that we are actually backed by the UK government, uh, which is pretty cool, right? So the UK government, one of the first backers of us here at Gatground. Um, and what does that mean? That, that means we have programmatic web filling on UK companies' house. And it means that our internal compliance and legal team get to look after all of the AML, the anti-money laundering, and the KYC, know your client checks. This is how we basically get to skip the queue when it comes to incorporation, is that the checks are all looked after internally, and we've got a, a direct in with UK Companies House. You can create a fully operational buy-to-let business within minutes. You can track all your property expenses, sign all your legal documentation, and much, much more. Um, and if any of you, you know, at a later stage wish to... Uh, wish to join a consultation, I can run you through a quick product demo and show you the platform and show you how it all works. And can we go to the next, uh, next slide, please? And um, then just to note as well, uh, we, so we, we, we have two separate structures that get grants. We can set up separate standalone limited companies for each individual property that you're going to purchase. For each property you're going to set, you're going to purchase, we will ring fence it. And that has a whole heap of benefits through, you know, you limit your personal liability, easier exit strategy. Um, but also we do have the option of setting up a holding company structure that sits above the separate standalone limited companies. Um, and this can have some, some benefits for, for maybe a portfolio landlord that is looking to build a portfolio that is looking to, um, I don't know, have, have an easier management of, of uh, uh, instead of managing individual companies, can manage a large holding company. It also can have some benefits from a loan perspective. Um, uh, so, so, yeah, so, so the... One second. All right, Dale, do you have, um, um, sorry, I just saw you, you shared my, I thought, it was a, I thought there was a message coming directly to me, Dale, sorry. And um, so, yeah, just, just saying, so, so we, we, we can set up a holding company structure that sits above the standalone SPVs or the standalone limited companies, and um, really just depending on, on the client, 
how they wish to structure the investment and what the purpose for the investment is. And we can discuss that on the consultation again um, and, and agree on the ideal structure for yourself. So next uh, slide, please. And then lastly, um, just to touch on our, our pricing structure. Um, and, and typically when speaking to clients, uh, they, they say, Connor, look, this all seems pretty cool, but I can guarantee you charge crazy fees and just gonna decimate my yield anyway. Well, not necessarily the case. Um, so at GetGren, we have, we've uh, got two pricing structures. One is for UK and one is for, for non-UK. Um, and any, any, any price I, I discuss here is, is not including that. And at GetGren, we will charge a one-time sign-up fee for UK residents of 149, 149 pounds, and for non-UK of 499 pounds. And with that, we form the company, structure the company, do all the legal work, and, uh, and form the business bank account. And then we charge a one, uh, or sorry, excuse me, an ongoing monthly subscription of 19 pounds a month. And with that, we look after the accounting, we look after the tax returns, we look after all the dividend admin, secretarial services, post management, and the management of the registered office here in the UK as well. So all in all, it comes around 240 pounds a year after tax, which when compared to the alternatives in the market, were 10 times more cost effective. And um, so guys, yeah, that, that, uh, that's, all from me. There's another slide that just goes into further detail on the holding company and the separate SPV structure, but th there's probably no need to, to go into further detail on that. We can discuss that maybe on a one-to-one -one consultation at a later date. And um, so, yeah, th thank you very much, guys. Thank you so much, Dale and, and Fabric, for having me on, and uh, I'm happy to take any questions. Thanks, Connor. So we'll do a uh, quick Q&A at the end of the webinar just for keeping within time. And sure. uh, Thank again, you. there was a few questions in there. We will, um, after the webinar, just get in touch. We'll put you in touch with Connor. He's happy to set up a one-to-one -one Zoom consultation where you can run in further detail uh, the benefits of buying through a limited company and whether that is you know, worthwhile uh, doing for yourself. So really uh, really interesting. Thanks for that, Connor. And yeah, we're going to now go over to Darren at International Property Finance to discuss the latest on the mortgage market. So any good news for us, Darren? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> There's always uh, good news, Darren. Thank you I'll, for uh, th yeah. thank you for letting, inviting obviously myself and uh, uh, and Max on here. So yes, um, no problem. It's been a bit of a crazy period over the last sort of four weeks with interest rates seem to sheep through the roof and everyone getting a bit worried about the government and everything else but it seems to be cal calming down i think you mentioned it earlier it seemed the the market seems to be correcting itself a little bit now and um yeah the, the talk from the bank of england or the lenders the bank of england potentially will be four and a half percent um sort of come middle of middle of uh next year but a lot of the lenders have actually already factored that into the rates they're offering now so you you mentioned obviously the the average rate about five percent. To be fair, if you're buying um, maybe sort of eight, nine, ten years ago, the average rate was that sort of that that sort of interest rate. So all it's doing is just going back to the way it was really. So, but the good news is the lenders coming back into the market. Um, at one point, there was forty lenders disappeared off of the uh, off of the lending options, which is from looking at lending deals for clients suddenly there was hardly any uh, but they're actually all coming back in now with products available yes their products less than five percent which is brilliant news whether that's in a personal name or like connor was mentioning for a limited company um it, it's i feel it's actually a good time to buy at the minute the rates are there are thereabouts um it's it's all about making sure it is positive um one of the things is obviously making sure the finance um, is cash flow positive and the way we do that is by looking at what the cost of the monthly payments are going to be um what cost the additional costs you've got whether that tax uh, like connor was mentioned for a limited company with the taxation for that management charge everything else we just make sure that when we give clients options it is making sure that it's not costing them anything per month fingers crossed fingers crossed but um but I think a lot, a lot, a lot of investors are one like wondering, like you were saying, is it a good time to buy? How is the market affecting um, the actual confidence, I suppose, in the buy side market? Like you said, I've I've done this job, hence a grey beard, for twenty four years. So I've seen the market go up, go down, go sideways in, in that period. Um, I'm 
a firm believer in this type of market, it's a fantastic time to buy as an investor. Um, there's more millionaires in, in properties um, produced in this type of market than there is when the market's um, shooting up like it has been for the last couple of years because property prices are sort of getting about normal uh, where they should be. Um, but you mentioned earlier the market might be slowing down a little bit, but if you look at a curve, it's still going up. So it might not be going up as quickly as it has been, but it's still going up. So it's always that's always a positive thing. Um, one thing I wanted to talk about is there might be some people on here, whether they're UK buyers or uh, foreign investors or expats on here. There's from the statistics from Nationwide, they Nationwide are coming back and saying in the next 12 months, there's going to be 1.1 million homes needing to remortgage, whether that be a residential basis or whether that be a investment basis so what we're finding a lot of investors are trying to maximize either their property they've already got or maximizing the onward purchases by putting down the minimal deposits they can to justify the mortgage in the first place so what we're finding in, and what we're helping and max will probably confirm this is a lot of investors are l reaching out to us and saying look how can we withdraw equity from our property because we're equity rich uh, they might not be cash positive, put cash bits, but they're definitely equity rich because property prices have gone up. And I suppose that's where we come in. It's just making sure we're looking at the lender's stress testing because that's a massive thing at the moment. The lenders are stress testing the rental income against not just the client's income, but actually the rental income they're going to achieve. Um, so we'll do all that in the background for them. So what we're also finding is if... Um, uh, if one lender says no we've got access to everybody so to give you an example yesterday i was looking at a client and it was an expat client looking to buy a property and i had i was looking at all the stress testing for about six or seven uh six or seven lenders and a lot of them were saying well he was looking to borrow 75 percent of 290 which quick maths 217 500 um six of those lenders come back and said on the stress test and we'll lend you about 170 180 so like you alluded to dale earlier is making sure you're using a broker that actually knows what they're doing and, and doing all these checks before you jump in head first at these properties but then i we actually found i actually found a lender that actually lending the, mo the most amount of money the rate was five and a half percent but my, my job is about making sure i can supply the product to that client and explaining the differences so that's what we'll do is make sure we sit down and we we talk about all the stress testing uh for the client before they get to that point now you obviously said and i've had the same experience making sure speaking to a decent mortgage broker i'm not sort of blowing smoke up anything but um i've been doing it long enough so if there's a scenario there's there's always a solution um whether that be 50 percent loan to value or 75 percent loan to value there'll always be a solution for the UK market or an expat um, foreign market to the fact that we've just aligned ourselves to a digital bank. Um, so I know De Connor was mentioned about setting up limited company bank accounts, etc. And a lot of a lot of clients, expat clients, can't come to the country to set UK bank accounts up. Actually, this digital banking will actually do that for them. So um, it's nice and quick and easy. The only focus on um, the UAE at the moment and GCC countries, so they're just sort of treading lightly. Um, but that's something else we can offer as well. So um, a lot of I, I deal with a lot of clients in Kuwait, which struggling to get mortgages. Suddenly, this lending can actually do it for them. So, um, but the actual <clears throat> the rates are, like I said, about going to be between five percent probably for a year or so, um, and then maybe coming back down again, which is I feel is good news, but. It's always a good time to um it's always a good time just to explore the options really um there seems to be a lot of portfolio landlords as well i know some of this is talk about port individual properties but the portfolio landlords where they're trying to withdraw equity we've got options for those as well so uh, last week i had a client come to me just looking for one mortgage but when i actually then talked to um talked to her a little bit more it turned out she had 15 properties and that those 15 properties were doing nothing for her she just thought she'll just trudge along with the same lenders on each individual property and when i actually said we could actually incorporate all 15 into one loan suddenly it it made a lot of sense for her 
Um, so she was able to then withdraw equity enough to buy three. So that's potentially going to be next year, but at least it gives her the options of actually doing it. So um, it's always good to, to to reach out and just double check to make sure you're using your the equity you've got in your properties to, to maximise that equity, really. So I don't know if Max has got anything more to add to that, but mortgages aren't the sexiest option. I understand that, which is why we've only got one slide. So it's always beneficial. And each individual client's completely different, isn't it? So it's always men, it's always beneficial just to reach out um, to Dale and the team or, or to myself, and then we can sort of look at each of individual in, each individual client's needs at that particular point yeah just um just coming back to back to that there are so many bespoke uh lending options that are available in the market um at the moment we're seeing as darren said around 60 percent of clients coming to us at the moment re looking into the remortgaging a lot of them remortgaging properties that they currently ha have held for you know three to five years really some equity from there so they can then use that capital in order to purchase their next onward purchase um which is you know something that's really uh positive uh you know five to six percent on on the rates for most expats and foreign nationals but we're seeing rates as low as 3.75 to to kind of uh low fours for you know domestic clients or, or or expats so it really does depend completely on the client profile there's lots of rates available for the limited companies um that uh you know are out there and around that same ballpark so yep get in contact and we and we can you know uh look at what avenues are best for you as an individual great so thank you very much for that uh darren and max appreciate that so yeah just interesting that because that's actually a strategy i used i bought a property um again just post the 09 recession i bought uh, an apartment's really nice area in Sanderstead, uh, near Croydon. And yeah, I paid 200,000 at the time, you know, the market was, it was a buyer's market. I put in a low offer. I got 10 grand of, of the price, uh, held that for four or five years that went up to 300,000 pounds in value. It's the best investment I've ever made. I've bought property in Brazil and overseas everywhere. And like, <laughs> so that done really well for me. And what I did then is obviously now, you know, planning to have children and family so we we actually instead of selling the flat uh we got in touch with the mortgage broker and he said well hang on you can release equity and i was still kind of learning how this all works and we were able to release equity by a lovely four-bedroom house with that put the deposit down take out another mortgage and then that house also went up in value we did some <clears throat> refurbishment to it uh and then a few years later we'd made another hundred thousand on that house so the, I think the what you're alluding to is a lot of people have built up a lot of equity over the last few years because prices have gone up. So a great strategy now is if we are going into buyer's market and there's going to be all these great deals, right? Get Release some equity and potentially look to either invest cash into some of these deals um, or take out another mortgage. So I think, I think that's quite interesting. And I certainly don't think we are where we were uh, back in 2009 or 2008 because there was deregulation of the finance market. There was the subprime mortgage crisis. There's a lot more regulation now. So I think things will start to get a bit more under control. And we certainly, I don't think, in a, a position we were uh, back then, but only time will tell. So thanks for that, guys. That's really useful. And yeah, we're going to hand it over to Alex Coates, Managing Director of Currency UK. Um, I did a little exercise a few weeks ago with Currency UK. We put together a chart because we've got a lot of our clients from South Africa, the UAE, Hong Kong, Singapore, all over. And what we realized is just based on the currency dev devaluing post the mini budget, people, uh, investors overseas were saving uh, in some cases up to 20% of the price of the property just on the currency saving alone. So people don't really think about these things. So yeah, I just wanted to uh, introduce Alex. And yeah, if you want to, if you want to take it from here, Alex, and talk about a bit about what you can do. Sure. <clears throat> Thanks a lot, Dale. Thank you for, for having Currency UK on, on here. My colleague, Nicole, is on here uh, with me. Um, and just to, to pick up where you introduced us. Yeah, definitely. I mean, this, this year, um, depending on which currencies you're looking at, effectively, UK assets have got basically 10, 15% cheaper. Um, and you're seeing this not just uh, in terms of property investment, but um, 
you know, uh, mergers and acquisitions. There are all kinds of headlines about this kind of heightened uh, foreign direct investment in, in the UK. Um, and simply put, that's because currency prices move a lot quicker than the prices of assets, the prices of property and so on. Um, so um, a little bit about who Currency UK are. So we are an international foreign exchange and payment uh, experts. Um, Currency UK was actually formed in uh, about 22 years ago. Um, so we've been around a long time. Uh, we're actually part of a much bigger global group, Currencies Direct. Um, who, and between us, we have offices um, around the world, including South Africa. We actually have two brands operating in South Africa at the moment. Um, and we have a huge amount of experience in, in the property market. In fact, the company and for, for the most part, the, the whole industry of foreign exchange experts is really founded on uh, international property purchase. Originally back in the late 90s, early 2000s, that was very much from the UK out to the, the common destinations uh, for UK buyers, Spain, Italy, France, Australia, and so on. Uh, and over the years, um, that's evolved obviously as a particularly um, the major city um, property markets have become very attractive for, for foreign investors as well. And we're now seeing uh, inward flows and helping um, overseas buyers with the currency pur currency purchases when buying uh, GBP mainly or a pound sterling as most people call it. Um, so with it, we're there to to make it easier when transferring the money, and we're there to make it cheaper when actually buying a different currency. So those are the two real uh, reasons for using us. Um, if we go to the next slide, please, Dale. Um, so a bit about me. Um, I've been here for 22 years as well. <laughs> so that, that's my age. I will say, just to connect with everyone else and talking about the relative, um, as our lights going on, the relative um, interest rate situation. Uh, when I bought my first property in 2007, uh, my first mortgage application was with Northern Rock one month before the financial crisis. Uh, the interest rate on my first mortgage was eight and a half percent. I literally could not afford to live in the house and I had to rent it. And I learned the very hard way what buy to let was all about. <laughs> so, um, so I mean, 5% interest rate, it's a very workable, I think. Um, and we've just, yeah, we've definitely just got very used to um, low interest rate markets over the past few years. That's enough about me, Dale. Um, let's move on to the next one. So uh, what's really on the agenda here um, uh, in the context of, of property purchases and particularly purchasing into the UK, um, then we want to look a little bit about currency volatility and what you need to, to look out for and why there's some opportunities there. Uh, talk a little bit about the impact of, of Brexit and subsequent um, crises that have impacted the pound, of course, a lot of other things as well. Uh, a little bit about what lies ahead for for the currency, uh, in particular sterling, and some top tips to uh, think about uh, when when making a purchase of a property, but particularly when it involves foreign currency, um, and how our solutions map to those those top tips to to help people. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so, does volatility mean I should not? Um, I should do nothing. It's a bit of a double negative, potentially. Um, volatility often is quite scary when people talk about it with the currency market. Um, but as we kind of open this particular currency conversation with, it, it often presents a lot of opportunity as well. Um, because unexpectedly, it can make, in particular, properties a lot cheaper. It can also make them a lot more expensive. So you have to kind of look at the, the pros and the cons there. Over the past few years, um, certainly sterling in terms of how affordable it's been from other currencies has been impacted by a number of different things. Brexit, uh, so moving back kind of five plus years ago, was the story for several years and drove currency volatility, really driving pound sterling down uh, globally, making it a lot cheaper for, for foreign buyers. Um, Simply put, um, the global financial markets did not like the idea of the UK being out of, of, of Europe, and, and that made the pound um, less attractive and made it 
<laughs> more attractive to invest in, uh, ironically. Um, the uh, COVID obviously uh, came along and also damaged um, the economics of, of the UK, amongst other countries, but in particular, the pound really did suffer. Um, and then more recently, unfortunately, with the uh, war in Ukraine, that has also had a, a big negative effect on all European currencies, or put a different way, has very much benefited US dollar and all other currencies by comparison have appeared a lot weaker. Um, so with this kind of volatility and these things driving currency markets, what are the simple things we can think about if we're just looking at our property investments? Um, number one is to ensure you start planning ahead for your currency exchange. All too often, currency is left to the last minute. And put simply, it basically changes the price at the last minute and it can become uh, a real difficulty to deal with. You can go through the process of arranging your financing, negotiating your price, only to find out that you basically don't have enough because the currency has moved against you. Um, the other two, uh, other step is to engage with a specialist, I would suggest us, obviously, um, and, and to receive some market updates, get a gist of what's happening. We can't predict the market, but we can certainly make you aware of the relative strength or weaknesses of the, of the currencies we're talking about uh, and what might be an opportunity or a threat in, in the next uh, you know, quarter or so when you're looking to make that investment. Next slide, please, Dale. Um, so um, Sterling in a, a post-Brexit world, uh, this is kind of a, a what comes next, really. Um, Brexit is still actually rumbling on as far as the currency is concerned, um, certainly. Definitely there are arguably more important things in the headlines, uh, such as the, the, the war in Ukraine. Uh, but the impact on pounds, on pound sterling, is still very much being felt. Uh, Brexit is yet to be resolved in a number of um, um, high priority situations. Uh, the Northern Ireland border, particularly financial services um, in terms of mirroring our services in the UK with the rest of Europe and so on. And this is still driving some volatility. Uh, again, we would suggest the same two tips really. Start planning early um, and talk to, uh, talk to a, uh, an expert and, and be on top of these, these impacts. Next slide. So, as I mentioned, we categorically do not uh, provide any advice in terms of uh, investment advice as vis-a-vis uh, -vis currency, uh, but we can give you some guidance on, on the, the, the threats that may lay ahead. Um, certainly recently, we've seen basically weekly changes in the British government, which have uh, caused all kinds of different ups and downs. Um, in a bizarre kind of uh, counterintuitive sense, it's impacted interest rates, which has actually strengthened uh, pound sterling a little bit more recently. Um, although at the same time, political uncertainty always weakens a currency. So certainly in terms of investing into the UK, that is an opportunity. Geopolitical risk, we've mentioned uh, Russia and Ukraine. Certainly we would hope that that situation resolves itself sooner rather than later on a moral front, but from a financial perspective, we would probably see sterling start to become more expensive um, and the opportunities in the UK uh, from a, a direct investment perspective look a bit more expensive as the situation resolves itself in the Ukraine. Um, and, and global economic struggles, uh, particularly the recessions that we're all talking about, obviously they are going to impact um, currencies on both sides and it's really a case of given your particular circumstances let's just for argument's sake say you are investing um, from a pot of funds that are in US dollars what's that going to look like versus sterling what is impacting dollars what is impacting sterling is the recession in the US going to be worse than the recession in the UK etc cetera, etc cetera. and we can give some guidance on that next slide please um, so top tips um, in relation to property purchase in particular uh, to do with currency. Um, I can't reiterate it enough. It's never too early to start this planning. Um, when it comes to actually 
being in a more uh, definitive um, uh, frame of mind in terms of once you have a particular uh, property to purchase, once pricing, funding has been agreed and so on, and it's really a case of, of waiting between that, that time frame of uh, agreeing and, and uh, uh, completing the property purchase and importantly the transfers, you can actually set up rate alerts with us. You can actually set up uh, rate alerts to understand when might be a good time to purchase, when a particular rate um, is available, uh, for example, to transfer your deposit over or however you're going to structure your payments. Uh, the third would be um, confirm where you intend to send your currency and, and where it's coming from. This is really important, regardless of whether you're using a currency expert or not. Uh, global money laundering rules um, really do impact the speed and the ability to move quickly with international um, transactions. And obviously that can impact a property purchase, probably more than others, particularly where there are completion deadlines and so on. So speaking to an international payment expert, we can make you aware of potential timing, different difficulties, potential administrative hurdles to make sure that those funds flow as quickly as they need to when the completion dates come. And then um, also do your research. Do your research on hidden fees, uh, charges you may incur in terms of if you have different options of how you're going to transfer funds or where you're going to store them. Very interested to see uh, Connor's presentation um, uh, in terms of uh, the business setting up uh, a bank account for the limited company. I think that solves a number of different hurdles uh, for, for foreign investors. Um, and it, it's that kind of thing um, that if, if you're not using those types of products, you, you can be really surprised by uh, un, untoward fees. Just for example, if you're trying to send money out of Spain and you don't consult with someone, uh, a, a international transfer expert, you could find yourself paying half a percent, one and a half percent, just for the pleasure of transferring funds, uh, regardless of what the foreign exchange impact would be. So th those are our top tips there. Our solutions, um, I probably won't go into too much detail here, I would just say that we have a solution to move money quickly, which is basically the instant or spot contract to exchange funds. But we also have solutions uh, to protect against unwanted currency movements. Now, that might be that the, uh, the pound looks particularly attractive at the moment, but the property isn't ready to invest in. But you do want to protect and fix that right now. Um, it could be uh, that you have a, a fixed pot of funds and you want to make sure that you don't lose the affordability of those. So you want to fix the exchange now for future payments. Uh, either way, we could use a forward contract to effectively secure a rate now where you can actually uh, obtain that rate in the future when you come to make payments. Market orders I won't go into now, just in the interest of time, but you can certainly ask us questions on that. Um, is there another slide, Dale? No, great. <laughs> That's me. So any questions, uh, feel free to, to reach out through Dale to Nicole or myself. Thanks, Alex. So as I mentioned, I've been working property now for 17 years and you know, I've dealt with a lot of companies that do currency transfer for my international buyers, as well as companies that can help with mortgages. So but having worked with various companies, you know, we do uh, whittle it down to the best in the industry. So if you're looking to discuss releasing equity or taking out a mortgage, definitely speak to Darren and Max at International Property Finance. If you're looking to discuss the currency market and how you could maybe take advantage of uh, the current dip in the pound, I always say like, it's like if a stock goes down, like buy now, right? Why buy when it's high? So if you're overseas or expat, you know, it could be a good time to get some money across. I do believe the pound is very resilient historically. I do believe it is one of the strong, strongest currencies in the world. And you've got a lot of investors still buying to earn uh, British income because, you know, they've got their own geopolitical and economic issues in their own country. So thanks for your time, guys. And yeah, just very quickly, I just wanted to discuss for 2023, as I mentioned earlier, you know, in terms of what to look out for, you need to make sure you're buying in good locations where there is a strong rental demand, regeneration, you know, you're going to have a tenant and over the mid to long term, as I mentioned, you know, property is a long game, you're not speculating. So you want to buy in an area where there's going to be good population growth, regeneration, and a high rental demand. So these are our top picks for 2023. Manchester, Manchester has done extremely well for a lot of investors of clients who bought five, six years ago in Media City, for example, their property price have gone up by around 40%. 
uh, Manchester City Centre, as you can see, is booming. I mean, there's, there's properties being built and developments going up. I had a concern, was there going to be an oversupply? The exact opposite, there's more, the population is growing so fast that all the buildings to date we've sold that are completed are fully occupied. So why do we believe Manchester is a good pick? Average house prices are up plus 22% since 2019. And, you know, Manchester... Manchester is one of the most loved cities in the UK uh, for buy to let investors. It has seen some of the highest price and rental growth. You've got five universities, over 100,000 students. Students accommodation as an asset class is evergreen. And, you know, COVID was obviously the, the student accommodation was empty, but we're finding a lot of young professionals looking for a bit more space, one and two bedroom apartments. You've got young professionals, students alike renting the properties that ours. Average house price values forecast to grow, according to JLL, still at 19.3% between 2023 and 2027. And average rental rates are forecast to increase by a massive 21% between 2023 and 2027. So very good scope for capital growth. As a northern powerhouse city, there's a huge amount of regeneration going on in Manchester and every single development we've worked on is fully occupied. You know, investors are getting yields of around anywhere from five, six percent uh, on their properties. So really good bet there. The second one I'd be looking at, and this is one that you do need to look at with caution. Liverpool is a, you know, it's a prosperous city in the, the northern powerhouse. It has a thriving business scene. Um, you know, it's got sporting venues, the Liver building, uh, which the Liver Bird sits, you know, for Liverpool Football Club. It's got the Beatles, so lots of history. It is one of my favourite cities. Uh, I enjoy visiting the city. I enjoy the people and the culture. There's a predicted 11.9% average house price growth between 2023 and 2027. Um, so not as high as Manchester, but certainly more in its infancy as a city. So prices are still probably 20, 30% cheaper and then a predicted plus 15.9% average rental growth. So a great market, a lot of regeneration actually, just on the Princess Docks, we've got a development called Aquitania right on the Liverpool waterfront. And again, you need to be careful on, you know, who you're working with in Liverpool because some developers are not as good as others. We will only work with a very select few who we know will deliver. They're fully funded. So this actually forms part of the 5.5 billion pound Liverpool water regenerations. They're going to revamp the waterfront along the Princess Docks, close to the museums and the tourist attractions. This is going to encourage more jobs. It's close to the business center. And waterfront property in general has always done well in terms of long-term and short-term lets. So definitely one to keep an eye out for. And we do have a fantastic new development, which is selling quite quickly on the waterfront. The next one would be def definitely on the top list would still be Birmingham. Why? Very simply, the HS2 completion set to boost demand for property. Average house price values forecast to grow by 19.2%, according to JLL. Average rents to increase by 19.3% between 2023 and 2027. And there's also high rental demand. It's got one of Europe's youngest population. So why is HS2 significant? London is becoming very expensive. People are being priced out of London. They can now commute into Birmingham, you know, within less than an hour uh, when the HS2 does come to completion in the next few years. It's also home to 80,000 students across five universities. So it's a very young population and good scope for capital growth. The next areas I'd be looking at, and these are the areas I've invested in in the past and done very well, as I mentioned before, is your London commuter belt towns. So places like Kent, place, you know, Bromley, uh, there's various places around uh, Chatham Waters in Kent. We had a fantastic development there that's now completed. And, you know, you're going to get slightly higher yields in your city centre. Your property prices are still 40% cheaper than London city centre. And what I've found is most young professionals, they don't live in the city. They live outside of the city in the southwest, the southeast, and they travel in because they can get into work fairly quickly. So there's an increased demand for rental property with good areas with good transport links. Uh, the rising cost of living is expected to squeeze household budgets over 2023. So affordability is an issue. And that's why people will start to, to buy in these emerging towns and areas around London, the southeast and east of England. So again, according to JLL, price forecasts to grow by 10.5% in the southeast and 9.9% between 2023 and 2027. Compared to the UK average, slightly higher. Uh, you know, high prices of property in London can deter a lot of people. The yields are not great. So we believe commutes about towns and cities are a great investment. 
So then we're going to go a little bit off the mark. There are other places and towns that we actually believe have good scope for growth that people might not be looking at or paying attention to, such as Blackpool. Uh, my business partner, actually, he started buying property there at a very young age. He rented out a serviced accommodation, and he does really, really well. So it's named the best place for landlords to invest in property, according to money.co.uk. Uh, it is a more popular seaside resort in Lancashire, northwest of England, but affordability is a factor. The average price of a property is around £156,000 when compared to the average house prices of £295,000. Again, when it comes to stamp duty tax, property investors can reduce the amount they pay by simply investing in a market at a much lower uh, point. And then there's also £1 billion regeneration happening uh, on, the, uh, on the, the, the waterfront. Another one, Sheffield, we believe there's a great opportunity there in Sheffield. Um, I won't go into too much detail for time's sake, but you know, Sheffield's unstoppable economy is now worth, the economy is worth seven billion pounds. It's growing by around 5% per year. It's very well connected by rail and road. Sheffield's two hours from London by train. It's near to the M1 motorway network, 30 minutes from four different airports, home to the world's most innovative in engineering organizations such as Boeing, Rolls-Royce, there's two very well-respected universities with 60,000 students attending each year. Uh, and it's positioned on the eastern side of the uh, Peak District National Park. So great for holidays. And again, if you're looking for short-term lets, it could be a really good opportunity because you can get like 9%, 10% yields on short-term lets with a company that we use called My Propertyo. So we do have some completed apartments available at the moment next to the River Don in Sheffield. These are actually coming in at below market value as well. Um, so yeah, that's it for me. Those are some of the areas. We do look at other tertiary locations. We've got completed property in Redford in Nottingham. We've got property in Camberley. We've got property uh, all over. So just depending on your requirements, mostly new build, off plan. Uh, you know, a, a lot of people are talking about the market and market potentially crashing. But what you need to think of an off plan is one of the advantages, you only need to put down 20% or 25%. You don't actually have to get your mortgage now. So if it's a two-year build, you're only going to be looking to get your mortgage or come up with the remainder of the funds at completion. You also have natural potential growth over construction. And right now is actually a really good time because before I was speaking to all these, we've got access to all the developers across the country. They were not moving on price. They were once at 100% of the sales price. What we're getting now is there's a bit more movement. They come to us and say, okay, we can maybe do a 3% discount, 4% discount. So I think right now, uh, you know, if you're smart about it, you do your research, it's a great time to potentially invest in the next 12 months. But about Fabric, we are now one of the tr most trusted UK property investment companies in the UK. Uh, Fabric Invest been running for three years, Fabric Property Group for, for six years. We're very proud to have 4.9% rating on Trustpilot. So you can go to our Trustpilot. We've got over 100 genuine customer reviews. Every single one of our developments we've launched to date has been built and delivered. We do very, very stringent due diligence checklists because I have seen things go wrong with off plan in the past. So we're very careful about who we work with. All asset backed properties in prime growth areas, good quality build, and it's a full 360 degree service. So if you need currency transfer, we've got UK currency. If you need a mortgage, we work with International Property Finance Limited. We also work with some of the best management and letting companies in the country who are not going to charge an arm and a leg. So you're going to get good value, good value for money, but not most importantly, good customer service, which I believe was lacking in the industry from my experience before. So that's something we're very proud of. Um, and yeah, what I'd suggest is we can, as the next steps, if you need information on a product or you would like to book in a consultation to discuss mortgages or some of the latest offers, we'll send you an email with a call to action. You can email us uh, and we'll put you in touch with Connor or, or Max or Darren for, for mortgages or Alex, if you want to do currency transfer. I spoke to a client earlier, used one of these apps, very good client of mine, Chris Miller. I think he's yet today on the, on the webinar and he ran into a problem because the, the, some of these apps, like there's no customer service, there's no phone number to call. It took a week for anybody to get back to him. So it's very important that you're working with customer centric businesses where if there is an issue, you can pick up the phone and you can actually speak to someone. And, and that for me is extremely important. So that's it from us. Thanks for joining us and staying on the webinar. We are busy putting together a UK property investment guide for 2023. 
which will also highlight the uh, the hotspots in the UK. So that's it from me. And what I want to just quickly go into question and answers for the audience for the next uh, few minutes and just see if there are any questions coming up uh, in the feed. If anyone wants to drop any questions in there for myself, uh, for Connor or for any of the mortgage uh, guys, just let me know. I'm just going to check the feed now. So one of the questions, can I add properties I own already into a limited liability company so that's probably one for connor yeah super question um so you can absolutely transfer however it may not be uh, uh advantageous we probably would advise against it and um, in 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 order for you to transfer from a personal into a company a transaction actually has to take place there and um, so your personal name is actually a a, a, a um uh, effectively a business structure in, 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 in essence, as well as a limited company structure. So you would have to sell the property from your personal yeah. to the company. And with that, you would be liable for capital gains tax and the company would have to pay stamp duty land tax. And um, so for the most part, it's probably, we would, we would advise against it, but there are certain cases uh, where it might make sense, but it's, it's few and far between. Okay. Brilliant. Okay. Let's see if there's any other questions coming in. So I've had a, question um and this is probably for darren um if i've got a property in london and my mortgage is 50 percent paid off would you recommend a currently to remortgage or refinance i'm on a i'm currently on a variable rate yeah definitely so what we could do with that one if if the client then is looking to um use some of the other equity to purchase another property yeah yeah it's definitely de definitely worth looking at that a lot of the variable rates at the moment are high fives it's not i've i've known some of the variable rates at the moment to be like six and a half percent so okay. yeah if you if even if you're not looking to withdraw any money at the moment you just want to look at just remortgaging it on to uh, a, a cheaper deal then yeah, just get in touch with us and we, we'll be happy to help you Brilliant. Okay. And another question, I believe this is best for Connor. Would you advise them to invest via a limited company or personal name? I guess that depends on personal, their personal situation and circumstances. But yeah, what's your take on that, Connor? Yeah, I think it really, as you said, it depends on the individual. Um, for the most part, traditionally, the setting up of a limited company would have been very, um, uh, very costly, which would obviously have massive impact on, on the, the, the amount of available money you would have to invest. But because now it's it's a lot cheaper to set up, it's a lot cheaper to manage, and a lot easier, and um, it's actually applicable for 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 a lot more individuals. But again, it would depend on your personal situation, whether you're higher rate, lower rate taxpayer, where you reside, etc. I, I guess what your end goal is, and um, yeah. but for the most part, uh, yes, it would it would it would be more advantageous to to uh, to invest through them in the company structure. Okay, great. Um, another question here for you, Darren. Would it be wise to fix in a mortgage? my mortgage is coming to completion. Um, if I'm taking out a new mortgage, should I fix it for the next five years or should I rather just take out like a, a two-year fixed rate or what would you recommend? That's a good question. I know it's like it's like having a crystal ball at the moment. Um, mm. To be fair, a lot of the, a lot of the uh, lenders um, are offering tracker deals at the moment with no tie-in. So you get the best of both worlds, really. So you could have a tracker deal um, so it tracks the Bank of, Bank of England base rate. Um, yeah. And a lot of the lenders will then offer you what's called a switch and fix. So as fixed rate mortgages come down, because the fixed rate mortgages aren't technically linked to the Bank of England, they're the fixed rate mortgage is serviced by what's, what's called a swap rate. And that's basically where banks and building societies borrow money off each other, if you like. And those rates over the last couple of weeks have been coming down. So um, the benefit of doing a tracker deal at the moment would be if once a fixed rate comes to a, a, a slightly better uh, opportunity or a better deal, then you can switch it with the same lender onto a fixed rate and then not worry about it. Okay. Um, but again, it depends on the circumstances. If you're an expat, some of the lenders will off, will lend you more on a fixed rate than they will on the tracker deal because the stress testing is a little bit less because they're sort of looking at the longer period. So it will come down at the moment. A lot of clients are doing tracker deals and discounted rates as opposed to fixed, especially okay. in the in, in the investment market. Um, yeah. If it's your residential mortgage, completely different. Then on a residential basis, it will be on a 
I'd recommend a fix at the moment. But if it's on an if it's an investment property, I'd look at a tracker deal with no extended tie-ins. Okay, great. Now another question. This is probably for you, Alex. Um, that's come through is. Should I, if I'm planning on buying a property, but I haven't found the property I want yet, but I've got money based in uh, offshore in South Africa, is it a good idea to fix in my rate now, get the money over in preparation to buy the property or wait in order to save on currency? I mean, um, notwithstanding the fact that that Rand has weakened substantially in in the past (laughs) even couple of weeks. Yeah, I, I think that can uh, that's very tempting to fix your rate, but you do have to be mindful that if you choose to not proceed with that investment, then you'll kind of be stuck with that rate and that in itself may be costly. So I would say once you enter into any form of commitment on the property, then consider fixing the rates, um, but not before that point. Okay, great. Thanks. And another one in here from uh, Zalfika. Can investors from abroad, non-residents, buy through a limited company? Connor? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Again, it would depend on the individual. Um, So to onboard and and for for a company's house to incorporate a company, if you're overseas, we will need to run an AML, anti-money laundering and and a KYC check. But yes, absolutely. Outside a few um, restricted zones, we can we can onboard and incorporate companies for for anyone overseas. Fantastic. Yeah, I was going to say. I mean, we do work with a lot of overseas investors, um, and yeah, the get ground solutions great because the problem I used to have in the past was they would struggle to actually set up a UK bank account, right? And with Get Ground, not only you know, is it more tax efficient, but you can actually set up a, a UK bank account, which obviously makes life a lot easier as well for, for non-residents. So that's really useful. Uh, we'll just take one or two more questions. Is it a good time to buy off-plan property or should I stick to traditional property? So that one's probably for me. Now, there's a few things to consider here. There has been inflation on build costs. So there are certain locations now where if you look at the price of of plan, it may not represent as good value as it had done in the past. However, there are opportunities, especially with new build developers now, where you could potentially negotiate some discounts and developers who fixed in their costs a couple of years ago. So construction might already be away underway. One of the benefits of off plan, remember, there's a lot of laws coming in for energy efficiency. Uh, You get a 10 year build warranty. So it depends what type of an investor you are. If you're active and you live in the UK, <clears throat> you want to get your hands dirty, you can buy an HMO and fix it up or buy an older house. But what I found, especially if you're living abroad, uh, as you, you want to be a passive investor and you don't have as much time, I think off plan and new build makes perfect sense because it all comes fully furnished and you know it's got the warranties and it's also got the energy performance. And a lot of it has the latest tech, like you know, a lot of smart homes as well. So that's something to consider. Um, just, then, just, just on yeah. that, Dale, sorry to have oh, cut you over there, is uh, with the mortgages, the mortgage companies at the moment, and the, the rules, you mentioned obviously the rules are changing. 2025, um, the government's basically set out that every property that's been rented out needs to, uh, needs to at least obtain a C rating on the EPC. So at the moment, Correct. the lenders are saying it has to say a D in England with mm. the potential for a C. So Interesting. a lot of all the new builds will be, like you said, energy efficient, everything else will be great. If it's um, if it's a uh, existing property, then just we just need to when you're looking at properties, you just need to take that into consideration. Yeah, there's things like on old houses, they're talking about bringing laws. We actually got to change the boilers to the new heat pump yes. systems. And yeah, so and a lot that, of boilers don't yeah. a lot of boilers don't actually um, bring the EPC up enough. Um, yeah. Yeah. So just, jet, but we can we can talk about that when we talk to clients about what yeah. properties they're purchasing. Both myself and Max have a, a good conversation. I've got a client buying a property down at Hastings. It's got an yeah. E at the moment, and he's doing it as a buy to let. And yeah. the I've had to get a new EPC done, and they said it could be a C, but you need to put secondary glazing in. You need a new boiler. Mm. The loft needs to have lots more insulation. And it just is suddenly cost. It's going to cost the client a lot more money than um, yeah. than he had yeah, in, envisaged. But actually. We then went back to I went back to the estate agent and and renegotiated by twenty thousand pounds to incorporate. The reason Cost. why it was twenty thousand pounds less is because 
it's going to cost yeah. the client this much more. So that's part of the process that we we offer as well. That's very interesting. And that's why I always tend to prefer new build. But however, as a company, we do also do that side of the business. We do have properties that might need a bit of refurbishment. We'll give you the pricing, the costing, what's but you do need to bear this in mind because it can even affect your mortgages now if it doesn't have the um you know the energy performance uh one or two more questions we'll take so miss earlier part but can you help me to make a limited company yes we can get crown can help you we will put you in touch and they'll be able to set up a limited company for you um i think what they ask is if they already have a uk limited company what are the downsides to change it to get ground can they actually change it over um, yeah, so re another really good question. Um, so at this moment in time, we can't onboard existing companies. Um, yeah. the, the main reason being is, is that every company that we set up is brand banking new, and hence why we have a direct deal with UK Companies House. Whereas if we were to onboard existing companies, um, we would obviously have to do extensive checks whether there's, in, 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 whether there's any employees, whether there's past history, whether there's death, et cetera. Um, and we would pretty much have to have to build a whole new legal team. We are going to do that and it's going to be in the new year. But right now, at this moment in time, we can't, but but soon and you'll be able to avail of all of our ongoing services. Excellent. All right. So I think time's up. I really appreciate that. That was really lots of information. Um, I didn't want to go into too much detail on products and so start doing a product pitch. We're a knowledge-based consultancy. We want to make sure you've got the right information so you can make an educated and informed decision. So anyone who registered, thanks for attending. Um, I've also got a YouTube channel now that has a lot of educational videos on it, training videos on property investments and you know how to build a portfolio and strategies. So we'll send you a link to that. We'll also send you the free uh, UK guide for 2023. Thank you so much for attending everyone. And if I don't hear or see, see you, have a Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. And yeah, get in touch with us anytime, more than happy to help. And yeah, have a great evening. Thank you very much. Take care. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.